Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna edit this data here, uh, put some formulas, and then create another set of reports such as those with total sales, maximum sales, and average sales, so that kind of report. And then after we do that, after we finish that, all the applied steps will be put into function. So basically, we will create a function here. And that every time um, we have this similar set of data, that function will be used and then you will not need to edit anymore all those data. Uh, you will not need to put formulas for that, but that function will be responsible in implementing those steps that we are about to take just once and then later on automate all of that and create your desired report. So to understand what I'm saying here, let's just do this in the Power Query. So let's load our data here. So this is 2019 data. And uh, let's load it into a Power Query and go to Data tab from Table Range, OK. And then first thing is to just remove these totals here, total here in after the Q4. So delete that. And then total in row 4 here, just uh, select the product here, the drop down arrow, and then uncheck the total. And that's it. That's, uh, we're not needing that. So after that, choose this product here and unpivot other columns. So uh, it's easier for me to create uh, a formula for that in this kind of data. So uh, the next thing is to create a reference table over it. So what we're going to do is to group by product. And then let's call it reference table, ref table. And then use all rows. We're not uh, aggregating anything. Just uh, get all the rows. And OK. And that's it. Uh, we have a table, particularly for product A, for product B, and C. So uh, now we're ready to add custom column. Let's uh, create total sales first. So it's just the sum. I'm going to use list that sum because we're just pulling into the table the particular column, and that will be turned into our data will be turned into a list. So I'm going to use list that sum. And that's a simple formula. Just refer it to the ref table. And in square bracket, choose value because uh, that's the item that we, we need to have the sum or, or the total. And that's it. OK. <clears throat> and then next thing is the average sales. So that's basically the same. Let's uh, put average sales for that and use list that average. So uh, basically, I'm just putting simple formulas here. I wanted to have as many applied steps as I have. So put the value for that. It's the same thing with list that sum, and that's OK. Now for the maximum sales, uh, let's say it's max sales, and then list that max. So that's it. And then uh, reference table, and then uh, not the total sales. Let's use a ref table. And then at, under that ref table is the value. Uh, we wanted to have the maximum value, and that's it. Then delete that ref table. That's our report here. That's our desired report. So as you can see here, those are the applied steps, and we're going to automate that, put that into a function. So uh, what I'm going to do now is to go to the View tab and click Advanced Editor. So those are the steps that we've taken. These are the formula. So basically, we can remove this uh, two line item here, the source and change type. That's automatic when you load data into a Power Query. So let's remove that. <clears throat> let's start with the uh, actual steps that we've taken, removing the columns and all of that. So uh, before the let function, let's create a variable here in open parenthesis A. I'm going to use A, but you can use any word for that. And I'm going to declare a type for that, which is a table. So A as a table. And I'm going to use a go to reference equals sign greater than sign. And that will turn all of this let function into a function, like a function type. So uh, basically, that's it. And then you need to edit the first line item here, the remove columns. Under the remove columns, instead of this uh, change type here, this uh, change type, the last steps applied. So um, let's remove that, but not all of the all of that uh, items. Let's remove this change type here and then put our variable, which is A. So put that. So that's the first step. Remove columns from our A, which is a table, and so on. And then click Done. After that, that's it. It's uh, what you're going to need to edit in this formula. 
and you have a function here. So let's rename it <clears throat> as uh, f or a function, and then uh, let's say it's a quarterly report. So that's the name. So we have that. So let's uh, make a connection for that. <clears throat> Go to Home tab and close and load. And that's it. We have a function here. Now let's load our data, our actual data here. And let's see if that is working. Go to the Power Query. And then uh, let's go to the function. Uh, let's uh, rename it first as 2019 data. Then go to the function here and choose that data, which is a table. Invoke that. And we have here our report. We, we don't need to have, to have uh, applied steps for that. Uh, the function do that on its own. So close and load tool. Let's create a connection for that first. And I'm going to rename that invoke function later on. So um, let's check it, check it again. What if we have 2020 data now? So uh, let's put that in a Power Query. So we need to edit that again, put formula and, and, and uh, so on. So instead of doing that, let's rename it first as 2020 data. And then let's go to the function again, again because we've already done that, right? So let's uh, rename that invoke function 2019 report. So let's choose in the function the 2020 data and invoke that. And that's it. That's our report here. Let's rename it as 2020 report. And first create a connection so that uh, not the two table will be loaded. Create a connection and then load our report 2019 and 2020. So for 2019, right click and load to. So 2019 first, load to, and let's just put it here side by side, uh, load to, and into a table existing worksheet, okay. So that's it. And then for 2020, let's go back to that and uh, right click and load to, and table existing worksheet, okay. So that's it. That's how you automate steps inside the Power Query put a function for that so that you will not need to edit that anymore. So I'm pretty sure I'm done. If you like this video, you can subscribe in my channel. Click the subscribe button and see you next time and thanks.